Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this seascape in Cabo. We're working on a 16 by 20 canvas today and here are the colors we're going to be using. I've got turquoise, phthalo blue, light blue permanent, titanium white, neon yellow warm, black and burnt sienna. So let's get started right away. I'm going to take my large blending brush and we're going to just paint the background first. Okay, and then I'm going to go right in to my light blue. Now I'm going to take, without washing my brush off, a little bit of that light yellow and white. I'm going to go over where I left off, reload my brush. Okay, now I'm going to go, without washing my brush off again, I want to do this wet on wet. Phthalo blue. I just want it to be a little bit darker. And then the remainder of the paint in my brush, I'll just add to the bottom here. So I'm gonna take a smaller blending brush. This is a number 30. And I'm gonna get a little bit of that peachy color again. Maybe just a little bit of blue in there. And then I'm just going to do a few little light, soft scoops like this. For a few wispy clouds, very soft. You can add more white if you want. I just want mine to be really subtle like that. Okay, now I'm going to come in with my turquoise. And just below halfway, I'm going to pull across. To create some movement in the water, we'll create little, little scoops like this. Then I'm going to add a little bit of white on the tip of my brush. There's some highlights right in here. Okay, I'm going to take some of my phthalo. I'm going to start coming up like this. Creating those soft little scoops. Creating some shadows and more movement in the water. And then just to make it look like the water's coming up a little bit here in the foreground, I'm going to just bring it up into a point like that. So we could just go up and then pull and flick. All of these little taps and pulls and dabs are going to add the light in the water and movement. Now I'm just going to use a filbert brush. 
sort of wiggle, flatten it, and get a little ridge of paint on the end of my brush to work with. A little bit more. Now, this time I'm going to take a bit of turquoise and white. I'm going to overlap some of this phthalo in here and change up the tone by just adding a bit of that turquoise in with it. I'm going to blend both turquoise and phthalo. And now I can come in and make some smaller ones that are farther away. That's how we're going to make them look farther away is by using a smaller brush. And like I said, you can use whatever brush you feel comfortable with using. You can get the same effect and create this with a liner brush, a round brush. I just really like to use filbert brushes. getting a little bit of water on my brush to help uh, those bristles get tighter together and to release some of the paint. I've got a lot of paint in this brush. Okay, I washed all of that out. I'm going to go in and switch over to some nice bright warm highlight colors. So white tinted with my neon yellow warm. And now I'm gonna come in and just add little sweeps this way and that way. So it's the caves and rocks up here that are reflecting down in the water. So when working wet on wet like this, be sure to just kind of make it one stroke and then leave it. Otherwise, you're going to end up picking up and blending the turquoise in with this and the blue and you'll lose this nice bright highlight color. We have an area here that's going to be a lot brighter. So I'm covering more of it. And then I'm going to go over and add lots of little lines. Okay. 
I'm going to take a bit of my turquoise now along with that yellow color, peachy color. And I'm going to bring it in and around here, around our darkest shadows. Pick up a little bit of white and brighten this turquoise up back here. Okay, now I'm going to come in with a liner brush and get some even skinnier little taps and dabs. Actually, what I could use, this is a really narrow round brush. So I can just use this one. Get a bit of water on there, phthalo blue. Just create lots of squiggles. And then I like the brown brush because I can also push and then let off, I can use it to get some larger areas, fill in some little gaps, but then let off and use it, the end of it as a little liner brush, wherever I need to. Come in right here and start adding a little bit more turquoise. And I'm not hesitating or thinking about it too much about where I'm going to put it. Um, this way, this process of painting will make your paintings look more realistic and have a better flow to them, and they won't look um, as overworked. So now let's see, I'll take a bit of white with my turquoise, and I'll create some little loops in here. Back to my phthalo, I want to come in and add just a little bit more contrast and shadow here. Okay, wash my brush out. I'm gonna go back into my yellow warm and white. I'm gonna pull this in, my brush is flat, see? You can even just kind of turn and roll.
I'm going to take both colors again, the turquoise and the yellow and the white. I'm going to bring them in here and then kind of up. Okay, so now we can start coming in with our big rock island here. And I'm going to be doing this first in, with a flat brush and a little bit of black and white. Use um, the size of brush that's appropriate for the size of canvas you're working on. So I've got a bit of water on my brush and because I'm working on a 60 by 20, I'm using a number 12 flat, but you could definitely use a smaller brush. You can use a filbert brush too. So I'm gonna start on this side. There's a smaller one here. And it kind of goes up on a little bit of a slant and then comes up, We're making it bumpy, right? So you can shake a little bit And then it's really dark at the bottom, so I'm going to take a bit more black here. Go right across the bottom. Just sort of graze right over the water. And then I'm just wiggling and like I'm slicing in little lines little bridges for the design of the rock. I want it to look really patchy and different all over. Take a little bit of white. A little bit of white and burnt sienna. I don't want to blend too much, I just want all those colors. Turning my brush flat like this. Get those colors again. A bit more white this time. I kind of just want to change it up. Barely touch the canvas, kind of tap and drag. You don't, you want that gray base uh, to really show up underneath and that's going to give you your little shadows and definition and make your painting look um, more realistic. Of course, because there's some parts of the rocks that stick out further. So they're going to be a little bit brighter, catch that light a little bit more. And then there's some that are going to kind of come out. And we'll leave a space and then start in here. And then we've got our little window, our little opening right there. Take a bit more black at the base here. We'll take our little bit of black there, whatever's left in our brush, and bring it up. A bit of our light colors. You can kind of alternate with all these colors here, or you can do it first just in like grayscale if you want. I'm going to be level with this one. So use that as a, a guide. I'm 
So then it comes lower here. It's almost like an H, right? And then across, but rounded. And then this starts to come up a little bit higher. And meets up with this one. up here and across a little bit see how I'm holding my brush guys kind of bumpy up and down And that starts to slant down here. I'm going to take more white and just start scumbling around to create all those different midtones and shades of tan and brown. Pick up a little bit of that yellow in there. It's like using um, a palette knife. I'm going to leave this dark because there's shadow. It's more in shadow and just darker, a light grayish taupe color. I'm going to go into my burnt sienna with a little bit of that black and white. I'm going to use my finger a little bit down here. Kind of lost my dark area down here a little bit. I'm going to pull and sweep that off. I'm just going to take a little bit of that off there. Just reloaded my yellow here. I'm going to take a little bit of everything. I'm going to turn my brush this way. I'm going to make it darker there. Go back into my black. and then slightly sweep up. White, yellow, overlap here, and then sweep up. Kind of wiggle.
And I'm going to need more white. Get it mixed in with whatever's on my brush. Let's start coming in with the rock area here. really start to make these rocks stand out now. Go right up to the top. Different directions with your brush. Sometimes you can turn your brush this way so we get some narrower rocks. Straight across. some rounded ones. And then sometimes just slicing in like this. And you can go right over all the other ones. It's just gonna make it look even more realistic. Just all of the layers. Pick up a little bit of my burnt sienna black. bit more black in there. I'm going to come in here because this one is behind this one. So we're going to make it a little bit darker and make this one stand out. I'm actually going to just off some of this paint rather than adding a bunch of white over it, top of it. I'm going to pick up a little bit of turquoise with my white and a bit of that yellow. Right under here. Start adding some more of those highlights. And then right under here, some turquoise.
And while that's drying a little bit, I'm just going to come back over here now and tap and pull in a little bit of turquoise and white. Sometimes we we'll, have to wait for the paint to dry and see how dark or light it is in order to know and be able to come back and add a little bit more. So just the same technique as before. Little lines here and there. And my shadow base at the bottom again. I want to tap it in so it looks like it's rocky. It's still pretty wet right there, but I can kind of use that with the corner of my brush and create some more ridges. And some more shadows. Okay, I've got another filbert brush. This is a number four. I've got more titanium white and I've added light ultramarine blue here. So with this, I'm going to take a little bit of this and create some different colored rocks for some cool shadows. This is going to play up on that peachy color that we've got. I'm just going to kind of wiggle around here. I'm going to add a little bit of it in the water too. Because not only does this color look really nice with uh, peach, it looks really nice with turquoise. Take a little bit of white with that light ultramarine blue. And we'll add a few lighter shadows in here.
And I'm going to go back to my black now. Kind of cut in here and start adding a little bit more of the darker areas at the base of these rocks. What you can actually do too is take burnt sienna and phthalo blue to make a really nice dark color. kind of comes out and bows and then goes back up there. bit more of that blue right there. With a clean brush, I'm going to take some white, a little bit of that yellow. I'm going to push into there a little bit, making it a bit bigger because it's kind of lop it is lopsided and it's just a little bit more up right here. So yeah, I just want to make it look a little bit more lopsided. Okay, back to my white, a little bit of that yellow. And take this up a little bit higher. Grab a little bit of that burnt sienna.
Okay, I'm gonna take my liner brush now. A little bit of that dark color, the blue and the burnt sienna. Start wiggling in some little lines here. And then bring some more white right close next to them, right up next to them there. They really stand out. I'll add the final little highlights here of my light yellow warm with my white.
add just a little bit of blue here at the base. Some light blue violet. Okay, so I'm all finished this painting. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and you learned a lot today. Feel free to paint along, subscribe to my channel, and like this video. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Bye!